Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new to my channel, please do like, share and subscribe for uh, fresh and new content up in the near future and don't forget to turn on post notifications as well. Uh, yeah, so today we'll be making a, a Sub-Zero base uh, Call of Duty Season 8 The Forge inspired mask kind of is the base you can see is a, is a sub-zero kind of base and it consists of paper mache and uh, cardboard uh, I will not show you how to make this mask specifically since there are a lot of tutorials on it and uh, yeah I put the link in the description box below if you want to have a look at uh, other tutorials on how this was made but for now we'll be continuing to make this a gas mask kind of inspired uh, from the forge and a little bit of radioactive agent as well okay so for this particular portion we need two Mountain Dew cans we need to mark a specific portion right in the center and uh, cut down that portion now you can either use a scissor like this one or you can uh, use a cutter like mentioned and you have to place it on either side of the mask and mark exactly where you want to place your filtration unit or a makeshift filtration unit in this case um, now once you do that yeah we proceed to cut the side Okay, yeah, so I've already made the markings as per the requirements, the measurements and exactly where do we need to cut using a standard marker or pencil or whatever you have on hand, you can use that, no need to stress about it. And uh, you can either cut it with a box cutter like this one or an X-Acto knife or a plain old scissor, whichever works for you. And then you take the prepared soda can, the one that's cut in half and place it in the slot okay guys so now I have already joined the soda cans as you can see with masking tape just to hold it uh, until the paper mache process and yeah I've also marked additional holes as you can see uh, this will be where we put the filtration cloth basically and yeah so this is how I had prepared it by making multiple slots on the excess portion that you can see over here and yeah so basically make some small slits or uh, small portions like that and uh, bend it and stick it with masking tape so that the fit is quite sturdy and will not move around even uh, once we have done the paper mache or plaster or whatever process you prefer taking but in this case we'll be doing paper mache of course. Okay guys, so we will start the paper mache process by taking a standard newspaper and dipping it into a glue paste, in this case glue and cement paste and we will proceed. Okay guys, so I've completed the first layer and it's already dry and I've made the cuts necessary to make room for the cloth filtration kind of thing that we are doing over here and uh, this is, uh, you can cut it with a standard utility knife or a cutter but yeah, you won't be able to cut it with a scissor exactly. The inside is quite dry and uh, more or less sturdy at the moment but we will require to put more uh, paper mache layers to study the whole thing. Cut to a few layers and I've already, it's already sanded and ready to go more or less. Uh, the inside is a little harder to sand since it doesn't really matter actually since we're going to be covering it with uh, filter cloth or whatever cloth you have on hand. Uh, just make sure to focus to sand on these areas that will be touching the face as I've pointed out and yeah the main areas. So the procedure for sanding would be uh, to start off with a wood, wood like uh, sandpaper quite sturdy that is about uh, 60 grit I think yeah as is mentioned over here and uh, this is a standard one used for wood and uh, especially on little bumpier areas it really uh, works well to smoothen and uh, level out the area 
and uh, then you proceed to with a much more finer one that's about 150 as mentioned over here 150 grit I guess and uh, yeah then you smooth out those uh, bumps that you just took off with the with the wood sandpaper and then you move on to an even more finer grit sandpaper that is about 180 or C 180 as mentioned in, in this one uh, this one is far smoother and really smooth finely smooths out your whole piece and gives it a nice uh, a smooth finish and feel to the whole uh, sculpture or mask in this case and yeah it uh, you can see all the layers that have been peeled off by the wood sandpaper and it really levels out everything and this is just to show you basically that anybody can do it you don't need any uh, fancy tools okay so we're going to take the same uh, paper mache pa and concrete paste that we used earlier for the thing for the whole uh, process of paper mache and we're going to be brushing it on with a normal brush whatever brush you have uh, whether it's an art brush or a hardware brush what I will do, we're going to brush it and sand it down with the finest grit sandpaper that we have uh, to finally give it to fill in all the all the holes and make it as smooth as possible. So this is the first layer that I've brushed on, and yeah, remember that uh, for this particular mix, I've used uh, glue. Uh, you can take uh, any amount of glue you require, and a little bit of water, uh, say uh, two parts glue, one part water, depending on how you like it, and a little bit of um, cement now suppose if you're taking it in such a small container then yeah maybe a teaspoon or two of, ce of cement would do uh, on varying proportion basically i've used white cement in mine you can use any uh, specific cement you like even if it's the gray one uh, yeah just a little bit uh, it really smooths out the whole piece and really adds a nice feel to it and it's really sturdy and helps in climates that are more humid like india for instance but in the middle east you would uh, you could do well with uh, with just a standard flour paste that would be great yeah. So let's get to it. Okay, so after a couple of coats of that and it's dry, and I've sanded down uh, this piece and as you can see it's quite smooth and quite nice to look at uh, yeah so on the inside also I've put a coat as well and uh, you don't have to really worry about how smooth it is on the inside since we'll be putting rubber padding on this portion here and uh, yeah the, the cloth as a filter on these three sections over here so it doesn't really matter and yeah so this is so the so we proceed to the paint now and uh, yeah the paint i've used is a standard uh, oil paint that uh, you use on on metal poles or uh, walls this is a metallic uh, type silver based just standard silver but it looks quite metallic you can use any one that you have uh, any paint that you have it doesn't uh, matter as long as it looks metallic or whatever kind of uh, shade you are after uh, so uh, for this particular paint uh, this Asian paints one uh, you have to mix a little bit of turpentine or any other kind of solvent you have in order to make it more uh, uh, pliable while you're applying it so it's not uh, so it dries a little faster as well and uh, gives it a much better finish Okay, so after a couple of coats it's dry and it's ready to go for our next process uh, as you can see it's quite uh, shiny metallic uh, this paint does quite a good job in uh, giving you that effect uh, which it depends varies on the surfaces as long as the surface is quite smooth it will give you that effect and yeah this is the side and the inside as well it kind of looks like banged up metal but yeah it does look like metal it won't really matter since we're going to be covering this with uh, rubber and some cloth as if acting as a filtration unit, filtration section basically 
the bottom of the mask and the side again the front again so yeah let's move on to our next section uh, that is cutting it up uh, scoring some marks around it in order to let the black paint seep in letting the black paint seep in basically to give it a more rustic and beat up effect Okay, since we've roughed up the edges or the surface of the mask with a with any with a sharp sharp object you can use any sharp object and now we'll be using a little bit of diluted black paint and filling in the scratches to make it look a bit more rustic and beat up basically yeah so let's get to it okay so it is done more or less we've done the facial section of the mask already so yeah i just basically applied black paint or you can use ink if you have as well and just apply it and wipe it off with a with a standard cloth and yeah as you can see it does give it quite a rough and beat up metallic look kind of post apocalyptic uh, if i may say so i guess and yeah the tint really adds to the vibrancy of the metallic paint that was already used uh, prior to this as well and uh, in order to make it as realistic as possible we need to conceal all the elements at the back so it looks like it's on your face and uh, the inner elements are not really visible yeah so apart from uh, using sharp objects to create the scratches and the rough tears you can use a sandpaper like this like the one i mentioned earlier the one that's used to uh, a sand down wood or any uh, thicker material to create the scuffings on the edges specifically since that is where we need to show that the weapons have been most in contact with as you can see so basically what we're going to do right now is add uh, some foam padding around the specific area over here just to protect your nose and the size of your cheek and jawbone as well because this can be pretty hard you can use any uh, glue that you like white glue super glue whatever it doesn't have to be specific as long as it's sturdy enough to stick it up i'll be using uh, super glue uh, just to stick these this foam lining over here Okay, so now that's done. So we're going to proceed to sticking the cloth that is going to mimic the um, air purification system kind of thing in this. Uh, you can just use standard cloth or any filtration uh, cloth that you can find. I've just used two stand uh, two layers of standard cloth uh, to mimic a uh, two ply filtration thing that you would see on any uh, so any normal mask. around and we're going to fit it in these soda can uh, compartment thingies that we created and one uh, bigger squarish kind of uh, one for the middle section as well and for that we'll need uh, to fix all of this in place we'll need uh, foam strips super glued or glued in any specific way that you like in order to secure it so it doesn't slip up any time and yeah let's proceed
we are done. Our gas mask is finally complete. And yeah, adding a little bit of elastic at the back in order to secure it uh, to your ears or the back of your head. And yeah, here is the final mask up close. The details and all the padding, everything added, the elastic, the filter, etc. etc. And yeah, we're good to go now. Just remember one thing, try to do it as cleanly as possible so that uh, it doesn't hurt your face in any uh, particular way, especially the foam padding and even the elastic, sticking the elastic as well. And uh, make sure that uh, some corners are as well as sanded as well as possible to avoid any uh, anyone getting scuffed or hurt while wearing this. So yeah, we're done. Yay, we made it at the end. <laughs>